Crombex Alpha was developed by Lee Crombeck in 1951. It measures internal consistency, that is, homogeneity, of a set of scale or test items. In other words, we want to know to what extent do all of our test items measure the same construct. Constructs are broad concepts or topics for study. For example, a construct might be neurosis, openness or intelligence. Internal consistency is measured by how well items vary together or intercorrelate. Alpha measures split half reliability. As an example, you might design a questionnaire to measure neuroses. You split the questionnaire in two. If you get similar results, this indicates high internal consistency. There are many ways you could split half a test. For example, you could split it by odd and even numbers or right down the middle. Conceptually, Crombacks can be thought of as the average of all possible split half reliabilities. Alpha is between 0 and 1. The closer your result is to 1, the higher the internal consistency. If test items are correlated to each other, alpha will increase. So the closer you are to 0, the lower the internal consistency. The length of the test does affect alpha. If your test is too short, your alpha level will be reduced. Lengthening the test may increase the alpha level. So what is a good alpha level? Macmillan and Shoemaker suggest that if your groups of items have an alpha of below 0.7, you should use those groups of items with caution. On the left, I have a list of items I want to find alpha for. The formula is on the right. N is the number of sets of items. We have three groups of items. Then inside the parentheses, we have one minus the sum of all the sample variances. Sigma notation there just means add everything up. So here we have to find the sample variances. If you're not familiar with finding sample variances, I do have another video on my YouTube channel that covers that. The hand calculation is a little long for a sample variance, so I won't go into that in this video. For this calculation, I'm just going to use Excel. Here's the formula. Equals VAR dot S open parenthesis. Going to click on the first cell in my column, followed by a colon, and then I'm going to click on the last cell. And I close my parentheses. There's my sample variance for that first group. If you drag the little square all the way across the row, it will fill in the rest of the variances. So now I know all of my variances. I just need to add those up. I get 18.24. And that's my numerator. The denominator here is the variance of the total. So I'm going to add another column to my data and total my items up. So that first row, 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. The next row is 16. And I'm just going to work my way down the rows, adding everything up. And I can find the sample variance in the same way I did before with Excel. I get 48.95, and that goes into the denominator. When I work this out on a calculator, I get 0.94, which means our test items are highly intercorrelated.